Hi guys, have you ever wondered why stainless steel is shiny and silver looking and why mild steel is blackish? Interesting thing is, both of them have the main basic element which is iron. Then why two different colors? And why these two are used in different applications but not the same? If you know the answer, just comment below in the section and show us how smart you are. But if you don't know, keep watching, you're going to learn very interesting thing today about why stainless steel is shiny and silvery and why mild steel is black and what are the properties of the steel and how do we modify the main properties of steel using different alloying element. If you don't know what the main qualities of metal like toughness, hardness, stiffness, strength, check out my this video and you will have a better understanding of how all these properties are measured and what are those properties in this video we are going to put some lights on how all these properties can be modified using chemical compositions and alloying element during manufacturing of steel. all these alloying elements are added during the secondary steel making process now some of these properties of steel can also be modified using different heat treatments and hardening treatment based on the metallic structure that you get during the cooling down process of steel but some of these properties are highly affected if you use some alloying element into the steel making process. In this video, we are going to know which of the alloying element affects which property of the steel and how that can be modified and how that can be used in different applications. So we all know the basic element for any steel is iron, but iron in its pure form is a very brittle and very easy to break. So that is why we add some alloying element to add some strengthening and some other properties like corrosion resistance and uh, ductility and malleability. So elements like sulfur, manganese, carbon, uh, molybdenum, vanadium, nickel, all these elements are added in the required proportion to get the properties that we require out of a steel. And all these elements are added in the ladle furnace where we add the alloying element and we measure it closely with the sample and using the high-tech computers that are controlling the environment around it. Carbon is the most important element which increases the strength and hardness of steel. Also, carbon is available uh, in a huge quantities in nature. It is the cheapest way of increasing the strength of steel. So the more carbon you add, you will get more tensile strength out of steel. Now another important element is sulfur. Sulfur is normally treated as impurities and we try to get it out during different oxidation and different purification processes. But sulfur is normally treated as an impurity during the steel making process because it reduces ductility, weldability and toughness of the metal. At the same time, you can add the sulfur to increase the machinability of the steel. Another important element is chromium. Chromium increases the hardenability of the steel. Sometimes, along with chromium, carbon is added. So chromium and carbon creates a very strong carbide-like material, which is called chromium carbide. And that is a really hard and increases the toughness and hardness of the outer surface of the body. So if you go out in a shop and buy any tooling, you will see a different kind of tip of all those tools. The main reason for those is they are added with some chromium to increase the hardness of the surface so it can sustain the wear and abrasion of the material. When chromium is added with molybdenum and nickel, it increases the hardness and toughness of the metal. This is exactly how stainless steel is manufactured. When we want to make stainless steel, we add extra quantity of chromium when it is more than 10% of chromium we can see a nice silvery look on the outside. Chromium looks like this, which is kind of a silver looking and shiny. Now, based on the different level of chromium and nickel and molybdenum composition, there are different grades in stainless steel like SS304, 316. It creates an outer layer of chromium oxide, which mostly deposited on the edges of the steel. So that is why when you scratch it, it instead of getting its damage, that chromium is further gets reaction with the oxygen and it creates another chromium oxide which works as another layer of protective steel. So that is why you can 
shine, polish stainless steel without getting the main material rusted. Remember, it is a stainless steel, not stain free steel. You, after a certain point, you can still get that thing rusted if you rip about all the layers of chromium oxide. Now, silicon is an element which is used to remove the oxygen using a deoxidization process during the manufacturing of steel. If you have oxygen inside the steel, what happens is it creates void and bubbles during the solidification process, and which reduces the strength of steel and also makes it brittle. Oxygen trapped inside the steel actually reacts with the steel inside and creates rust and so strength of the steel reduces. Now there is an element called vanadium. It is used to increase the hardness and toughness of the steel. There is an interesting element called boron. Now boron is used to increase the hardenability of the steel surface but what it does it increases the effect of all the alloying element multiplied by its own effect. So that is why boron is added into the mixture to enhance the effects of existing alloying element. Another element is nitrogen. We add nitrogen to create nitrides in the steel which increases the hardness and tensile strength. But in return it reduces the ductility toughness of the matter. So if I missed any other important element please comment below and let me know how those elements are important and if you have learned something please like share and subscribe.